what's up, Schnell, and welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog today. Thanks to the Patreon account and Vinyl Altar, because for one, it felt great supporting a brick and mortar record store, but the fact they also got their own Outer Heaven variant, and I did not have to deal directly with a certain record label that I have a bad track record with. When it comes to getting what I actually paid for, so getting Infinite Psychic Depths through Vinyl Altar, knowing I was supporting brick and mortar record stores as well as Outer Heaven, and I know I in some way gave the label money, but it doesn't matter. Now, I wasn't thinking, but... If you're a fan of Realms, not the band Realms, but I need to talk about Bargain Bin Blasphemy. Because the artwork is just legit, no pun intended, otherworldly. It's like legit, like Matt is on some like, I, I don't even know, but we need to hang out and have a experience of psychedelic gnarliness because I don't know how else you could come up with like, all right, now the fact, I don't know if this was thought ahead. But, oh my goodness, the back matches so well, the gatefold as well, but right here, I can see these mountains, check this out. Oh, like, it, it's, it's really something, like, I wish more bands really, like, like, because obviously this was thought out. It's like mortuous. Like, the layout for In the Wilderness is very similar to Upon Desolation. And I love it. Like, I, I was honestly bummed with the with Necrot Mortal on vinyl because they didn't use the Demon Grand on the B-side. Like, I legit was like, oh, man. Like, it just... And I know that shouldn't matter, but, like, to me, it kind of matters. But, real quick, this is legit. And not just because I've been an Outer Heaven fan for a long time. But, when it comes to Pennsylvania death metal, there's Outer Heaven... And then there's Ritual Mass. I'm not sure if Topos Nomos is still alive and well. And I know Durketta. Durketta, one of my favorites. But I'm talking, like, modern. Because I, 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 I could talk all day about Pennsylvania death metal and how sick it is. But, like, modern Pennsylvania death metal bands... I really don't know how you can mess with Outer Heaven, like, at all. Like, like I said, them and Ritual Mass are, like, just exactly what I am personally looking for, like, when it comes to just, like, death metal. And one of the cool things about Infinite Psychic Depths is... There's parts that legit go from, like, immolation close to a world below to, like, straight up, like, devourment, like, semi, like, just crushing, hey, I can mosh to this type parts. And it's not, like, 
a bunch of hardcore dudes playing death metal. No, uh, it's not. It's not that at all. Cause like I read a, the decibel review and like they used the word like I don't. It was like a weird like instead of just saying like yeah, there's like some parts that have like some like real heavy breakdown kind of like one of my favorite tracks on Realms of Eternal Decay is uh what lies beneath and it just has that like that that, that like deep beat like just da, 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 like his, but like to me it's like okay sp like i'm going to spin i want to spin kick whoever's right next to me in the face cuz this part rules and like i love like i saw outer heaven outer heaven one time with suedo god and they pretty much played straight up bestial death metal. And Austin's vocals on the new record really are something special. Like some of the guest appearances on here are like super gnarly. But like to me, like these two records go together. Like I feel like you you pro like if possible try and get both of these but i need to get the live at saint vitus and the covers released but realms is a it's just one of those records it's so good it has held up wonderfully since uh 2018 and Pennsylvania represent Shagoth Kinetics. And you got to respect that type. See, I, I'm like a nerd about that type of stuff. Like, if you're a Pennsylvania band, like, try and throw, like, Pennsylvania, burn, like, off the risk, mix and masters realms where I'm pretty sure Infinite Psychic was... Rammy Greg Wilkinson at your Hammer Studios. So you get that punchy, just like, I mean, come on, Greg's an autopsy. Like, you, Leather Glove, Death Grave, Greg knows good death metal. And he just absolutely nailed it like Christ to the cross. What a good slab of death metal. Especially modern Pennsylvanian death metal. And Realms of Eternal Decay. Like, this is one of those albums in 20 years. It's gonna be one of those legendary, like this, like Blood Incantation, Star Spawn, uh, Tomb Mold, Manners. These records, like them or not, they've made an impact. They've changed whole bands' to, like paths, and you know it's kind of interesting seeing. Like, I don't want to call it a revival of death metal, and I hate the term OSDM, so let's just not use that. But, like, I remember when bands like Ossuary, Os oh my god, it's going to be one of those. Ossuarium. See, I can't even say it anymore since my brain injury. But this band, I thought was going to be, like, the next big thing. And they ended up breaking up, to my knowledge. And, like, that's a bummer, but, like, I hate to tell some of you younger, like, watchers. That that's life. That's how it is. I never thought I'd step on a stage again to play live music, but after the first Adabisi Live show and the second Frogmas show, I'm down to pretty much play any venue. Like I don't I don't like yeah. Pat and I were like, yo, like 
Uh, we, we both kind of like. I don't know. I I don't like, I don't want to say we we like nailed it because like I I screwed it up. I left the laptop at home, so I didn't have the field recordings for the ambient frogmas part. But it honestly it still worked out like the ambient stuff. But as soon as we went into the noise. I, I start and like w we both started doing vocals and I start like kind of like my hair's like totally like, kind of like completely over my face but like I'm looking around and like people are just like, like what the like dude these guys are, are like nuts and with Adabisi Lives like I went and put my gimmicks on because like we have two micro three microphones technically but i'm hold one is a pitch shifter which normally legit i do not use vocal effects aside from reverb with a cursed womb but with adbc lives it, it it's gore noise it's meant to have that but i watched some sulfuric cautery videos and the one microphone shifted and the one's regular so I, I, I just, the whole set was just going back and forth or doing both. And it just felt so good. What does this have to do with Outer Heaven? I'm sorry, nothing. But just, hell yeah. Like, all I could say about Infinite Psychic Depth is hell yeah. Like, imagine if you, like, legit got, like, late 90s immolation formulas fatal to flesh error i know i'm saying error error <laughs> but this isn't fucking english class see now my video is gonna get mm. but still I, I don't care now i forget what i was talking about but it was important i'm sorry <laughs> But, like, for real, like, oh. Alright, so if you were to take 90s immolation and inject them with, like, what works in a modern death metal environment, this is the outcome. And I mean that in the best way possible. Because, like, that was the one band that, aside from Morbid Angel, like, immediate, and, like, Deicide, there's few bands that I, like, legit will say, like, yo, if you're a fan of this stuff, Austin's vocals, again, like I said, he's kind of got that, like, best deal thing at times, and he just... I love Austin's voice. He's a great front man as well. Just a great vocalist. Like, but probably my see. I'm trying to think like what my favorite track. Like my favorite track is probably Star Crusher. Like if I had to pick, but like Soul Remnants, Pillars of Dust, Fragment and Suspension. Sergeant Stutter, jeez. Fragmented, su oh my god, Suspension, Drained of Life, Liquefied Mind, which is like a single, Unspeakable Aura, Rotting Stone slash DMT, Dave Suzuki, Guest Guitar Spot, like, yo, for real, Zach, whoever chose that, Hales, Vital Remains, Skeleton Proof Tanks, my old band is spanked on Icons of Evil. I thought that was kind of cool. It was like a little full circle moment. Like, I just was like, whoa. Like, like I, I I played with Vital Remains twice. And, like, they liked us enough to thank us. So, I always felt like, hey, we did something right. And, you know, uh, yeah. Just my, my, just my friends know some of the other stuff that happened at the second show. Uh, yeah, but, um, it, it's nothing bad, but, um, I, I kind of 
wasn't confident in myself when I was kind of offered something kind of sick. At the time, I just, I, I like, was like, whoa, that's, a, that's, that's heavy. Like, I, like, that's a lot. I don't know. I, I just, I, I should have at least, you know, went for it. But, like, I didn't even tell anybody for, like, a couple of years. I just kept it to myself because I kind of was like, ah, oh, did I screw up? And, you know, it was, it, it was just, like, it, it was nothing permanent. That's all I'm going to, like, say. But, uh, this was actually recorded by Ryan Reed. Bass recorded at Boxcar Studio. Well, Boxcar Sound by Sean uh, Pearson. But mixed and mastered by Greg Wilkinson. So you get just this gnarly production. But, like... Brody Utley, J.R. Hayes from Pig Destroyer, Tabitha Rudy, Steve Tucker, Alexander Jones on death, uh, Dave Suzuki, and like Derek Vela. But is Derek, I don't, is Derek like, I mean, his name's officially like right there, but then it says like get additional solo. I, I don't, I don't know. But I guess it's because maybe, like, the solos aren't, like, marked. Like, the you know how, like, Blood Incantation names, like, certain guitar solos and stuff? It's not like that, like, when with the lyrics. They're just, they're just lyrics, like, and they're great. Like, um, I, I honestly, like, found myself reading the lyrics, like, multiple times. Because Outer Heaven's one of the few death metal bands where you can, like, legit, like, sing along if you know the lyrics. Like, you know, it's like that cannibal corpse, like, type. That's what I mean. Like, it really has, like, a vibe to it that's really hard to capture properly. And a couple years ago, Outer Heaven did this four-way split. And one of the bands got canceled. Another band almost got canceled, but get, but fired the people that made some mistakes, I guess. I'm not trying to cause any drama. It's just I want to tell what the my honest opinion about what happened with this split because it was Gate Creeper. Um, Homewrecker, Scorched, and Outer Heaven. And Outer Heaven just had such a good song. And I just remember, listen, like, Austin gave, like, like, gave me a test press. Again, I'm not, I'm not going through all my, all that stuff. But, like, I should have done this ahead of time, but I did not. It's with all my other test presses, so I apologize. But I should have got the regular split out as well, because the cover art is so sick. But um, out of those four bands, like I always like, it's like I would see Outer Heaven and Scorch at least twice a month, from like 2017 to 2018. And then a little bit in 2019. And then the last time I saw Outer Heaven was at a Decibel Metal and Beer Fest. Because Austin gave me a t-shirt. Uh, but I think it's awesome that Vinyl Altar got uh, limited to... It says here 100 copies, but it said 135 somewhere else. I don't care about that stuff, I'm just saying... If vinyl altar's not sold out, don't get mad at me if, like, you know, it's 135 copies and not 100, okay? Because, like, yeah, I, I just don't want somebody to get mad at me over something stupid like that. Like, it's just, it's just a number. Like, it's not like they're hand-numbered records. Like, calm down. There's, like, 17 variants. I just had to order this from Vinyl Altar for multiple reasons. 
But again, like the bargain bin blasphemy, Matt Stryker artwork, it's just, you know, again, I feel like he just keeps getting better and better, but still, one of my favorite pieces of bargain blasphemy art is this right here. Come on. Like, Poison Blood by Witch Vomit. I don't know. That's just... And I know that's, like, nothing as gnarly compared to something like Infinite Psychic Depth. But, like, it's, there's just something that always, like, just puts a smile on my face. And, like, same here. Like, as soon as I look at this, I'm like, alright, some death metal. Like... It's obviously a death metal record. Like, I've been around long enough. I, I know what this is. If this wasn't a death metal record, I, I would legit, like, destroy whatever band this was. Like, just like, yo, you fucking posers. Like, what are you doing? Like, because, like, to me, this is a blind buy. If you see this at the record store, like, well, why wouldn't you buy this? It's ridiculous looking. The artwork's just, to me, top shelf. And this dude kind of reminds me of the dude on the Witch Vomit full length, uh, buried deep in a tomb below. I, see, I hate doing this, especially this late in the video. But it is, like, right here. And, of course, wait, what by... Oh, god damn it. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah, I shouldn't even have attempted that. I knew it wasn't going to be in order. <laughs> but, yeah. Outer Heaven, Infinite Psychic Depth. This is the death metal event of the summer. Pretty much. This and the new Torture Rack are like my two favorite death metal records of the year so far. Along with the Spectral Voice when the gang split, but that's a split. So that's like my favorite split of the year so far. I'm hoping Sulfuric Cautery does like a, a like compilation of like all their splits and stuff. I think that would be really cool on vinyl just because they do. I have a, a lot. Of their material, but like, you know, like a lot of it's on like just like split tapes and stuff. Uh, Joshi sent me like uh, a mix, and like, same with Morgue Breath. Like, I have like the releases and, and whatnot, but uh, like, this stuff really needs a vinyl, like, it needs to be on vinyl. And I, I'm I, I'm just a fan. I, I love my death metal. And, like, especially, the, I should have said my, my death grind in this case. Like, filthy and, to me, Morg Breath and, like, Sulfuric Cautery are, are the two, my two favorites. Like, alongside, like, Dripping Decay. And, like, I know Dripping Decay is more just, like, death metal, but, like, that's some West Coast, that's on the, the West Coast shit. Like, right now, East Coast, like, no joke. And you might be like, whoa, wait, what, what, what's Morbid Destroyer? Yeah. NVNM, Respect New Jersey, again, like, and Blasphematory, even. Like, that tri-state, you know, like, connection. But, like, Morbid Destroyer have a very specific... And gnarly, ancient, like, death metal sound. This is something that could have came out in 1991 and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. This is a modern slab of Pennsylvanian, but yet American death metal. And the American influence, I think, is, like, the most important aspect of outer heaven like when i hear outer heaven i hear just american death metal or what some of you call osdm but like 
throw in, you know, because, again, like, you have fans of hardcore bands that are in Outer Heaven who understand, hey, when we play this live, you don't want this. Like, I mean, I know we're all getting older, but still, like, if I'm playing live, to me, like, this is disrespectful. Like, I, it's just being like, all right, like, I'm ready to go home. But, like, you know, when you're into it or, like, mo like moshing, like, so, like, I, I can tell there's certain songs where it's like, all right, like, that, that's going to be a banger live. Like, don't stand next to me when that part comes on. It's like, you know, it's one of those, like, things. Like, you just got to. If you're into that type of stuff, but otherwise, like, if you're looking for just some killer, straight up, heavy as hell death metal, top shelf stuff here from Outer Heaven, this, like I said, along with the new Torture Rack, definitely my two favorites of the moment. And, like, I hold Outer Heaven, like, to a very high standard. So, like, yeah. I would let you know if I was like, ah, like, it's okay. Because I know some people are going to be like, oh, you're just biased because you, you love that band. Like, no. If I thought it was mediocre, I would be, like, kind of gutted, honestly. And would be like, ah, fuck, man. Like, I don't know what happened. But no, this is, like, killer. And I'm sure, like, there's people, like, oh, shit, you know, whatever. And listen to what you want. Who cares? Like... I'm I'm listening to Where Goat after this. Like I I don't give it a crap. I've just been in love with this record since it arrived, and it's just time for some Where Goat sometimes. So, thanks for watching as always. Thank you to Vinyl Altar and Outer Heaven for letting me know about this limited, 100 neon orange edition of Infinite Psychic Depths. To me, this is. Like, when Horrendous did, like, I haven't heard the new Horrendous yet, so I can't speak on it. But, like, when Anaretta and Asidious came out, there was that Swedish, like, thing still in it. And that's what I always, like, like when it came to Outer Heaven, there was always that, like, there's something else here. Because it's not Finnish, not Swedish, it's American. And few bands legit pull it off properly. And all you have to do is look at the guest spots on here. Because, like, as soon as I saw Dave Suzuki, I was just like, that's awesome. And then I was like, I wonder how many kids even know who Dave Suzuki is. But if you don't know, you should know. And just go on Encyclopedia, whatever, and yeah, like, you'll, like, trust me, look up, look at, like, Vital Remains, uh, and a lot of the other bands he was in. I think he did, like, Sin, Sin of Angels. That I, I played with, like, a couple of his bands. Like, Sin of Angels was, like, a Death Doom band, and I can't remember. The one was at the truck. One show was at the truck, and one was in, like, Allen. No, no, wait, was it? What? Well, maybe it was Allentown. It was either Allentown or Reading. I don't, I, this was, like, 2006. It, it, maybe 2005. It was before Icon came out by Vital Remains. But, um, Outer Heaven, really, to me, like, because, like, if you listen to Dechristianize, like, there's tons of breakdowns on that record. Like, the the one part on Dechristianize, like, I remember, like, distinctly moshing to. Like, like the... 
And like devouring Elysium has that like just straight like it's got like ridiculous blasting and then it goes into this like evil as hell death metal. I'm sorry, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Thanks for watching as always. Listen to Outer Heaven, you fucking rule.